Hello! Ah, the mighty PlayStation. Sony's first foray into video gaming, and what a flop it was too. Only three units were sold worldwide, and only one game was released for it. Oh wait, I've got that backwards. Yeah, this was an absolute runaway success on the market. A massive, massive success in fact, as I believe everybody watching this video is pretty much going to be aware of already. And I mean, look, you press a button and the top flips up. <laughs> Who even needs games? Amazing. Keep you busy for hours. But yeah, after a while, they did that thing console manufacturers do, and released a mini version, a little ickle one, called the PS1. Stylized exactly like that. And there it is, being much smaller and prettier and all that kind of stuff. Well, is it prettier? Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Maybe you like big square grey things. I know I do, because I was a PC manufacturer in the 90s. Not really. And... This came out later as well. Little emulation box thing they released last year. I bought one, started to do a video on it, and it was so depressing, frankly, I never finished it. It's not very good, but you can now pick them up dirt cheap and hack them, apparently. So, hey, if that's your cup of tea, that might be something you can look into. That's gone now. Right, so what we're looking at today is something I got mildly obsessed with, um, especially buying them cheap, which is screens, portable screens for consoles. I've got several of these things. I've got a GameCube one, an original Xbox one, PS2 one, but today we are looking at ones for the PS1. Four manufacturers looked at this and thought, you know what? This is small enough to take with you somewhere. You still don't have to plug it into the mains, obviously, but hmm, there's also enough uh, power coming through the old DC in there to run a screen as well as the console. Mmm! And this gave them ideas. And I tell you what, one of the first people who got that idea were Sony themselves with the official PS1 screen. Uh, I shall attach this properly in a moment, but that is quite... Oh, why is it rattly? Oh yeah, because it's got loose screws in it. That'll be why. Got worried there for a minute. You'll notice the basic setup, screen, stereo speakers, that is very common amongst the items we'll be looking at today. But first, I need to plug in my mighty world's ugliest memory card. Seriously, HMV, what were you thinking? Oh yeah, because these are the cheapest to manufacture or buy in bulk, I would imagine. And I shall plug in today's controller, which is the weird Namco thing that has the um, sort of steering wheel attachment. Just like a real car. If your car does have one of these, please send me a picture. I'd love to see it. Right, let's plug that in. And of course, for testing, we have the finest game ever released for any computer system. Star Wars Masters of Terras Kasi. I'm being very sarcastic here. It's absolute arse. It's a one-on-one -on -one fighting game with Star Wars characters, and it's terrible. It stars a character called Arden Lin, who has an arm like a traction engine for some reason. <sighs> It's not good. But it was released at a time and there's very little Star Wars stuff coming out, so I'd bought it on day of release anyway. Yeah, that went well, didn't it? Interesting point. The martial art of Teres Kazi is now canon in Star Wars, because the lady from Game of Thrones mentioned it in that solo film. That's weird, isn't it? Right, jump cuts to having already attached this because it goes on via screws. Actually, do you know what? I'm going to show you all the connectors before we do that. It won't take long. There's the AV out connector and there's the power pass through which goes into the back here. That was easy, wasn't it? Right, jump cut. And here it is, all beautifully assembled. Mm. So on the back now, you've got some extra connectors. We've got an AV in jack, which will accept both audio and video input, but uh, good luck finding the right cable for that. You've got the headphone socket, in case you want to plug headphones into it. It's fairly simple, isn't it? And you can still have the AV out, so you can still connect it to a television without disconnecting the PS1 screen, for it is a very nicely designed thing. And flip her up. And here we go. You've got brightness up and down. You've got volume up and down. What more do you want? Not a whole lot, really. Stereo speakers, it's all very nice. Let's turn it on. Oh, yeah. Mm. Nostalgia. It waves at us and through us. Right, actually, I'm going to have to jump cut to this game having started, because I've just realised the intro to this will have a lot of copyrighted music. Actually, that's given us a chance to manoeuvre the camera around and turn the lights off for a little bit more clarity. So, what you're seeing with the naked eye isn't quite as high contrasty as you are seeing through the camcorder at the moment. I will fix it a bit in post, but, uh, yeah. 
it's a really nice screen this is a 640 by 480 resolution tft five inch thing and it looks bloody great I, mean, I know it's small but you can have it quite close to your face so that's not a massive problem also there's a character in this game called Hall. just thought i'd mention that he, he is a uh is, is the sand person character isn't it tuscan raider i think yes because thok is the gamorian guard and horse this game's not very good guys don't worry, it's not canon. Right, well, except the martial art of Terrace Kazi, as we mentioned earlier. Go on, let's give us a quick arcade mode. Look, I've got everything unlocked from back in the day. Why did I play it long enough to literally unlock Jodo Cast, who, who is basically Boba Fett, but a bit brown in the armour? Deary me. Go on, let's have a... Let's have a Vader. Is it Whore? It's Whore, isn't it? Yes! Darth Vader versus a Whore. That's what we've always wanted to see. Um, something I'd like to point out about the screen that I love. Look at that. On screen display! Oh, I love an on the screen display. Right. This is exactly how Darth Vader fights in all the films. He stands there and punches like that. I can barely remember how to play this. One of the buttons will get a lightsaber out, I'm sure. Oh, yes. Now we're doing it. He's got special moves. He can call forward lightning just like he doesn't in the films. This game is bad, but we're here to look at the screen, which has got to be said is pretty blimming good. I use this quite a lot for playing Tekken 3 because I really like Tekken 3. And about once a month, I think I want to play Tekken 3. And I get out my little PS1 machine and that's the game we play. But we're doing Star Wars today for irony reasons. Next up we have Logic 3. And my goodness, Logic 3 made so many peripherals and accessories for the consoles back in the day, it was almost unbelievable. There was a Logic 3 everything, and indeed, there was a Logic 3 screen for your PS1. Squarer design than the official one. Um, you've got your speakers at the side here, obviously, and a lot more sort of uh, bezel going on. And it's got its own power button, which is interesting. The official screen just came on automatically when the PS1 did, so there's a thing. Um, you've also got this jolly carrying handle that we'll have a look at in a second. Um, you can switch between PAL and NTSC, which is interesting, depending which market you're in, um, which means they can sell the same unit worldwide, which makes sense, I suppose. And also handy if you've got, like, multiple PS1s or a chipped one, you're playing foreign games or something, I suppose. For the side... Oh, look at this! There and there, headphone sockets! Amazing! So you can have two sets of headphones put in at once, and you and your loved one can listen to the intro music from Soul Blade together as God intended. Also on the side you've got uh, volume and brightness as one would expect and that's about the lot really. On the back all you've got is the input for the um, power and your pass through again and instead of having uh, little screws you have to do it with a coin this time you've got little thumb screw things. Let's attach them right now and you can see what it looks like when it's all together. The answer is of course ugly because it's got that memory card in but uh, we'll try and ignore that. We'll do our best at the very least. Right, screw this one in. Helps we actually pushed in properly. And the other one, in order to make sure it doesn't disconnect halfway through your gaming thing and suddenly pull the power out of your PS1, which is not marvellous. And yeah, that actually looks quite good by the time it's on there. You've designed that quite well, Mr. Logic 3. I mean, I presume Logic 3 is run by a man called Timothy Logic 3. Why wouldn't it be? There were some scratches on the front which has been taken around in the past, but whatever's. And look, a little carrying handle. Uh, that's quite sweet in its way, isn't it? Um, I like that. It feels like a solid unit. So what is it like in use, though? So I'm Mara Jade now, for, for some reason. Oh, and the focus is gone. No, it's back. We're OK. So this screen, again, is pretty bloody nice. Um, again, I think it's using the RGB sort of full output of the PlayStation as opposed to some dodgy composite pass-through for lower quality video. Yeah, it's really nice. I wouldn't have said it's quite as good as the Sony one because there's a little bit of light bleed from the left and right, so it's not quite as clean as the Sony one. Why has the focus gone? Ah, it's back now. Everything's going to be okay, except this game, which is just bad. Um, yeah, this is a perfectly good little screen to be using on the go with your PlayStation. I see no problems with this at all, really. It's not quite as nice as the PS1 one in design or in function, but still pretty good. Still better than I would have expected it to be, to be honest. And finally, from long-standing peripheral maker Competition Pro, it's their version of a screen. Also sold by a company called Voyager, I believe, overseas, so that's a thing. Here it is, look. It's got a screen. 
a full colour LCD monitor. It says so on that sticker there. Um, that's a thing, isn't it? Look at it with its weird tray. Yeah, they went for this sort of tray attachment here. Well, I say attachment, it's part of the unit. It's not coming away. Um, that is all part of the same thing. Good for them. <clears throat> Odd way of doing it, but uh, it does mean, I suppose, you can do away with the screws and stuff because it's very unlikely to come out of the whole tray thing because it's protected from the sides. You've got your DC out and your AV in for your PS1, obviously. There's nothing else on the screen itself, but on the sides, you've got your DC. DC in for your power. You've got your earphone out as usual. However, interestingly, you've got this slightly odd power setup, right? So you can have just the console on, um, presumably if you're then running it out to a television or something. That which turns on the screen and the console, and that one which is everything off. All very odd. And you've got three little twisty things for your volume, your brightness, and your colour. This is the only one with a separate colour control. Hmm. Although from uh, memory, when you use it, you just kind of want it a max all the time, because if not, it looks a bit washed out. Maybe that's the screen, though. Couldn't say. You've got your A3 pass, uh, AV pass-through, as ever, and you can use the screen separately with your video in and your audio in. So I plugged my Blu-ray player into it through an adapter and, well, it'll play video for a couple of seconds and then just drops out. Also, I've just noticed there are two pixels on the screen, which one of which is permanently stuck to red and the other is permanently stuck to green, so that's rubbish. This was a bad idea. So, let's uh, just slot this baby in, I suppose. That was easy. Is that in as far as it goes? Yeah, that, that is. Hmm. Mmm, yeah, this this is feeling, although it's got more interesting inputs and stuff, it is feeling cheaper than the others. The plastic is a bit cheaper feeling, but equally, it doesn't fit all the way in the tray. It's an odd design, a very odd design. Oh, look, um, there was a PAL version, NTSC 1 and NTSC 2 versions. That doesn't surprise me. I suppose you could expect that, really. And it was made in China. Again, you kind of expect that, to be honest. Um, yeah, this is, hmm, not, not the nicest one. Also, right, get this, put the screen up, when it comes down, it just flaps straight down. There's no um, particular uh, retention in the uh, hinge or anything, it just slaps straight down and smacks your screen. So that's good, isn't it? Yeah, it's feeling a bit cheapy, this one, and it's looking a bit cheapy, but what is it like in use? I'm the Stormtrooper now, who has all the same moves as Han Solo for some reason. Um, so, this screen, not as good as the others. You haven't got anywhere near as good a viewing angle. Uh, you've got a light bleed from pretty much all edges. And it's not quite as clear. I don't know if you can pick that up on camera. But it's a little bit fuzzier than the others. But, um, um, do you know, I think actually that wouldn't worry me if I hadn't seen the others all together um, in a row. It's, it's not far out. Not far off the others. But it's certainly the least superior of those thus presented. Fuck you, Chewbacca. Well, there we go. Those are the three screens for the PS1 that I own, but it is by no stretch of the imagination an exhaustive collection because there's at least another five of different designs, unbelievably. Wild Things made two different ones, Joytech made one, Thrustmaster made one, and a company called Brooklyn released one called an MT3600 or something, which I haven't been able to find out a lot about, but I have seen a photo, so it did physically exist. Yeah. The portability of the PS1 was definitely something that uh, companies very, very much wanted to cash in on. But, as you would expect, Sony did it themselves best with the mighty PS1 screen there. Logic 3 isn't far behind, gotta say. And of course, the Logic 3 is the only one you can uh, use both PAL and NTSC on. So if you suddenly want to switch from a UK version of Tenchu to the Japanese game LSD Dream Emulator, that is your only option. Subscribe for more.